yourself down. Don't get up. You're good. Don't do anything. Stop what you're doing. Don't do anything. Just stay in your bed all day. Hi, I'm Michelle Hammer, and I have schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a mental illness that changes the way you think, feel, and act. It's broken down into three separate categories, positive, negative, and cognitive. Positive symptoms don't mean they're a good thing. It's an add-on to your normal behavior. Things like hallucinations, delusions, and voices. You know, I had so many ghosts and shadows inside of my mind. A demon was perching on the end of my bed. Negative symptoms take away from your behavior. I showed no emotion and I was just totally out of it. Cognitive symptoms make it hard to pay attention and hard to focus. Your brain is just racing, it can't stop. The pathology of these illnesses has only become recently understood. Schizophrenia is different for everyone. My symptoms aren't like everybody else's. My first symptoms of schizophrenia was pretty much just zoning out, thinking I was in a different place. Then it turned into kind of voices in my head. It just plagued me over and over again. I thought my mother was trying to hurt me. I didn't know what to do about anything because I thought everyone had it out for me, so I didn't know who to go to for help. Sometimes I kind of hear a voice more coming from the right side of my head saying like, everyone hates you, stop what you're doing, don't do anything, nothing, nothing. Well, it's kind of like the other side of me is kind of arguing back with the voice. Don't worry about anything, chill, just chill, breathe, chill, just chill, you can get through it. And it's kind of just like the thing is, who's going to win, who's going to win, who's going to win? When I take my medicine, the good sign wins. I mean, living in the city and having schizophrenia is interesting just because, you know, I do hear voices as I'm walking down the street. So in my head, I'm thinking of the person talking to me, but then I start talking back to the person. And then maybe I'll snap out of it, look around, and like five people are staring at me. But mostly I kind of just get plagued by thoughts that are just so repetitive in my head and they just go around over and over and over again, when really I just want it to be nice and quiet and silent. All through high school, I had this like really crazy paranoid delusion that my mother was trying to kill me. Kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. Every time she went to try to get me to a therapist or anything, because she knew something wasn't right, I always thought she was trying to ruin my life. So when I went to college, I thought I was free of her. And everything was great. And then all of a sudden, my best friend, my roommate, I started thinking the exact same things about her. So realizing that I had the problem was like the start of the entire thing. And that was the hardest thing to do, I think, realizing there was a problem. At 18, I was told I was bipolar, but I kind of knew that diagnosis was incorrect. So at 22, I spoke to a different doctor and I was more honest with him and he diagnosed me with it. schizophrenia and that was like the best thing that ever happened to me because he got me on the right medication and I feel as good as I can possibly feel right now. I finally told a therapist about what was going on with me. I had all these problems and I finally had a name for them. Over time we've realized that mental illness is nothing more than physical illness. Talk to as many people as you can. Don't be ashamed. Don't be judgmental. I see a psychiatrist every other week, and we just kind of talk about things that are going on. Mostly I just share really silly stories with him, and we just laugh a lot, when really he's measuring just my mood. And that's what I know that he's doing. For my medication, I take seven daily medications, six in the morning, and one at night. 
The ones in the morning just get me ready for the day, get me focused, make it so I can get out of bed without having a horrible day. And the one at night just keeps me kind of level, knocks me out, and lets me have a good sleep without completely panicking in the middle of the night. It can be very lonely having schizophrenia. The paranoia, the fear, the voices, everything that goes along with it. The compliance with medications is going to ultimately lead to a recovery and your son or daughter can not only be okay, but they can be great again. It took a process of almost 10 years to get me on the right medication, so I'm glad that I finally am. People think that just because you're on medicine that the voices will completely stop, but you, you just can't stop the voices. With medication, it's more positive listening, it's more just zoning out, as long as I'm not thinking of negative, horrible things. My soul was leaking out of my body. I just saw a human being empty. I'm good. So you can't turn the voices off, you can just make them to what you prefer to hear. Be conscious of something that will take your attention from that negative situation into a positive one. And you know, it takes a lot of discipline, but little by little, it becomes a habit. One in five New Yorkers has a mental health issue, but people don't talk about it because of all the stigma. There's still a lot of stigma, but people are starting to understand it a little bit better. Kind of like a big reason why I started my clothing line was that um, I was on the subway and I looked down the subway train and there was a homeless schizophrenic guy just talking to himself and I noticed it was in the same exact mannerisms as I do it. So I kind of thought to myself, what's the difference between me and this guy? And I realized if I didn't have my friends, my family, my doctor, I could so easily be in his position. Part of the reason I started my whole business was to just tell everybody that I have schizophrenia. Showing people you can live a completely normal life, medicated, and be a completely normal person. And my whole thing is, if everyone would just kind of tell people that they have a mental illness, there wouldn't be so much stigma. There really shouldn't be any stigma that needs to go away. Mental illness is so common. How can there be so much stigma? So I kind of wanted to do something that could raise awareness, give back to the mentally ill homeless community, and just kind of make a difference. Hi, how are you guys doing? Schizophrenic NYC was all made by me. Schizophrenic New Yorker, trying to change the way in your city's mental health, especially the mentally ill homeless. Donate a portion of the profits to help them out. Yeah. I just pack up my bag. I wheel it all over my shop every Saturday, and I just sell my merch and I talked to amazing people. Yesterday I met two people that work in a psych ward. We had the greatest conversation about psych wards. They totally bought something for me and they took my card and they're like, we love what you're doing, this is so great. You know, mental health professionals love what I'm doing. They always think it's great. I've gotten negative reactions. Like one lady came up to my booth last year and says, I can't believe you would name a business this. This is offensive and I'm a mental health advocate. And this is offensive and she took my flyer and ran away. And I was like, can I tell you about it? I'm a mental health advocate too. And she just ran away and I was like, isn't that stigma? Aren't you judging me before I even tell you about it? Stigma right there. This shirt's pretty awesome. It's not a delusion. You are incredible. Some common questions that I get is, what medications are you on? Mostly by people in the mental health field, they want to know. Other common questions are like, how to like handle somebody in a crisis. I mean, definitely never tell them that they're wrong. Don't try to take away their feelings. You always have to be sympathetic. I would try to convince them that they should seek professional help. Find a good doctor, find the meds that work. If you try hard enough and you really want to fix it, you can. Don't take your medication, feel better, and then think you don't need your medication anymore. It took a lot of pride that I had to say, I need medication and I'm just gonna take it. My advice to someone who's going through it is be honest. If you keep telling people you're fine, they'll believe it. I believe there is a component beyond medical treatment that it has to be with education and creating positive voices that can influence and override the negative ones. Just because they have schizophrenia doesn't mean they can't be someone who will contribute to society, who can make the world a better place.